Fly Zoo fans, thanks for joining us today for Virtual Voyage. I hope that you guys are enjoying your day. If you are stuck at home, um, we wanted to bring you a little joy here from the zoo and these amazing animals that we have here. Um, all of us are still taking care of these animals on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so we wanted to take you a little behind the scenes at what we have going on here. So I am Jen, I am the lead of the Africa area and I get to work with these amazing animals and these amazing keepers as well. You can see one of the giraffe coming up here. This is Amara. If you guys are zoo fans, you probably recognize our giraffe. Um, Amara is 17 years old and she's been here at the zoo since before she was two. She's been here a long time. She has um, three other mates out here um, in the yard and they'll probably come over here in a minute. Um, so these guys are Maasai giraffes. So if you notice on Amara's patterns, they're kind of blocky and splotchy. Um, this is the species that these guys are. So Maasai giraffe are a little more of a rare type of giraffe. Hi Amara, you wanna carry it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> like checking everything out. Um, so you'll notice if you see a lot of giraffe prints on clothing, you know, purses, things like that, they're very blocky patterns where these guys have a lot of, um, a lot of splotchiness. So these, um, these particular species have this beautiful pattern. Um, and if the reason that they have this pattern, um, is not just because they're pretty, but they actually have great camouflage. So if you're out picture um, a big beautiful savanna and lots of giraffe out walking amongst the brush and the trees. These guys blend in really, really well. So it's actually for their camouflage. Um, another really cool characteristic about giraffes that people are always fascinated by are their tongues. And so you can kind of see Suzanne here is holding the brows for Amara and you can see her sticking her tongue out there. Um, these guys will actually stick their tongues out and wrap around the leaves um, and pull it off just like Amara is doing there. So they have these big, long, dark purple tongues um, and that's because they have to stick their tongues out all the time and they don't get sunburned that way. So it's a pretty cool adaptation that they have. Um, also, you can kind of see there, she has, um, the way that she pulls it, she has that big top lip. So these guys actually don't have any teeth on the top. So if you ever see cartoons of teeth um, on a giraffe that are big and have those beautiful front teeth, that is not true. They actually only have incisors on the front, on the bottom. And then they have molars on all four sides, just like we do. And the reason is because they have a hard palate on the top. Oh, it looks like Noel might come over here. And um, they have a hard palate on the top and they will actually pull um, that food off and then they just put it to the back of their mouth and then they can chew it that way. So they actually don't have any top teeth in the front, which is pretty cool. But you see that big thick lip on the top that she has there and that gives them some protection. Um, if these guys were in the wild, they would be eating a lot of acacia, which has really big thick thorns on it. And these guys are able to sort of move their tongues and their mouth around those thorns. So it adds a little bit of protection there too. Isn't that cool how she pulls those leaves off? Um, so this is kind of the bulk of their diet. Um, in zoos, we call it browse. It's just plants. They eat a lot, a lot of leaves um, and they will eat some of the bark off the leaves um, as well if um, it's something that they really like. So they do also get a grain diet, which is basically like you taking your daily vitamin. Um, it's kind of the same thing. It's got all their vitamins and minerals in it. So they do get some grain as well. And then they get a lot of hay out here on exhibit, which is basically like dried grass. Um, so they get, the majority is an alfalfa hay, which is a richer based hay. Um, and they eat a lot of hay out here on exhibit as well as um, inside their enclosures. So that is a, the sort of the bulk of their diet. They do also like carrots, um, sweet potatoes, a couple different types of vegetable too. Um, these guys also have three other species of animals out here. So we have the ostrich that you guys probably recognize if you come to the zoo. Um, we have two ostrich out here, Jack and Gobbles, that hang out with this giraffe a lot. Um, we also have the largest species of diker. They're called yellowback dikers, and they're actually a forest antelope. I mean, they have a big yellow stripe down their back. So you'll see them a lot of times out here hanging out with the giraffe, crossing the exhibit. You'll see them sort of up along the edge of since they are a forest animal. Um, and these guys um, enjoy being out on the savannas more. You'll see the dikers more along the edges and not just kind of hanging out in the middle. They can kind of move wherever they want to out here so they can choose where to go. 
Um, we also have these really cool birds called Southern Ground Hornbills, and we have a family group of them. Um, it is a mom, dad, and a baby named Jezebel. Jim, Jane, and Jezebel are their names. Um, they're very fun. They're big black birds with um, orange necks, and you'll see them out here as well. Um, Jezebel has a cool story because she was actually hand raised um, by us and then reintroduced back to the parents. So it is great because it's sort of the perfect combination. She knows that she's a hornbill. She has all of those um, characteristics of a hornbill. She, um, you know, lives with the parents and does everything that she needs to do. So it's a great um, sort of story. And she is wonderful. She's full of personality. So you'll see the hornbill out here um, running around together. Um, so this is Jack that's gonna come over. This is our male ostrich. Like I said, we have two ostrich here. We have Jack and Gobbles, and Jack is the male, and he has those black feathers, um, where Gobbles has the gray feathers. So it is breeding season for Jack as well. So you'll notice he has a few feathers missing. That's normal during this time of year. They will groom each other as well as themselves. And if he puts his face up here, you can kind of see how pink his beak is, even around his eyes, his legs, his feet. During breeding season, these guys get bright and beautiful, um, and he's kind of showing off for gobbles. Um, you'll also see him dance once in a while. If you guys have ever seen that on YouTube, it is hilarious. Um, and they will dance and kind of show off, kind of like Amara is doing there. Oh, and here's Jezebel's going to come over and say hi to you. Um, so you can see Amara will kind of get what she wants off of that, um, off of that branch and then, <laughs> hi Jezebel. So this is Jezebel, the hornbill that I was talking about that was hand raised. Um, she's just kind of starting to get her, her coloring and, um, getting that orange, um, eyes and, and throat sack. She's going to check out our stuff back there. <laughs> <laughs> she's so fun um so it, what you guys can do at home to help these giraffe you know um support any conservation that we have going on if there is an event um at the zoo we have giraffe days we have different things going on you can always come out and support um the zoo from home you can recycle you can take care of your yard um all of those little things will add up to bigger things um and all those little um turning your lights off saving um electricity all those little things actually add up and help these animals out in the wild believe it or not um so anything that you can do at home to just be smart about your environment definitely has a bigger impact um you can buy sustainable products um, you can look and see what your ingredients are, make sure that they are, you know, rainforest friendly. All of those little things that you can do at home have a huge impact. Um, so thank you guys so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. And we're going to be doing these every day from the keepers, education staff, all of us here at the zoo that are still working hard to um, give the best care we possibly can to these animals. So thank you guys for joining us today.